hello hello everyone how are you hope all is well and hope you'll have a beautiful and awesome day today now as is expected the press association of jamaica is outraged with the fact that supreme court judge justice vinnett graham allen decided to lock out the media from the court hearing in the case of Jalan Silveira murder of his wife Melissa Silveira and as far as the little that I know is that court proceedings to appear fair to the public is for public viewing and the press is allowed so maybe just for the initial stages but I hope she don't feel like she can totally hide the case away from the public because he's a public figure and the whole case is like corruption in high places because there were too much people involved in the cover-up of the murder of Melissa. So people are attracted to this case. People want to know what is going on and this case can be tried in private. So let's hope good sense prevail. Anyway, let's get into the source of what the press association is saying. The press association is calling on the presiding judge in the murder case of former legislator Jolan Silvera to roll back her decision to bar members of the media and the public from the matter. Silvera is charged with murder of his wife Melissa Silvera. He made his first court appearance on Thursday, but the media and his family were barred from the proceedings by Supreme Court Judge Justice Vinette Graham Allen. Justice Graham Allen says she was using her discretion in the matter as it was a preliminary hearing. But in a statement on Friday, the Press Association issued a strong statement saying it's alarmed by the judge's decision. Former president of the PAJ, Dion Jackson Miller, says based on the high profile nature of this case, it's important for the proceedings to be open to public scrutiny to help maintain some level of confidence in the justice system. In my opinion, majority of Jamaicans don't really trust the justice system already so with this judge doing this will further let people look at it as two laws in Jamaica one for the rich one for the poor and the justice system is just the same one for the rich one for the poor it not looking good worldwide the press association further argues that the principle of open justice as practiced in Jamaica's constitutional democracy allows any member of the public to observe court proceedings except in exceptional circumstances. The body also cites the Supreme Court's own media protocol which states the media helps to enhance confidence in the justice system and that the public with few exceptions are allowed to observe court proceedings and the body is calling for the immediate reversal of this judge's decision unless there is a compelling explanation and justification in this case mistress jackson miller says if there is an explanation the public must be told what that is. Justice Graham Allen has said she may permit coverage at a later date. Silvera is set to make his second appearance on February the 8th. I think this judge should recuse herself from this case because right off the bat, we are not trusting her as people in the public. And her taking an egotistic approach in words like she may permit coverage at a later date. Oh, you mean you may? So you're going to keep the whole of this case private? 
who is you so you and Jill and Silvera is friend families neighbors or anything more even if for example she said the hearing she did not permit coverage which is really outlawed but you further style it by saying that you may permit coverage at a later date so chances are you could say you are not permitting coverage lady galang dear man i think so many jamaican people and people all over the world has take a personal interest and is attached so much to this case you understand because this is a innocent woman who it was deemed at first died peacefully in her sleep and even though there were questions like how a healthy just 42 year old woman just died peacefully in her sleep what could have caused this you understand and all of that only for a few weeks later to be told that she had gunshot wounds in her body she was murdered not one shot not two shot not three shot she was murdered in her own matrimonial home and to make matters worse those who came on the scene claimed there was no blood so how long was her body there so they could have been able to clean up the place so no blood is seen and no blood to be coming from the body because it take quite a few hours for blood to stop coming from a dead body so you know we don't even know this well i know those things might come out in the court but we have brain out here and we're seeing that this case is really cruel artless and gruesome and it's coming from a lawmaker's home and the elaborate cover-up the switching of the barrel so that the bullet won't match the gun and all that going on like lady we need to know how cruel and evil the people that are going to be running this country the kind of association and what is going on this is a big case you can't lock out people from this people is very much invested in this case you understand and when you think about the children oh jesus and you think they're going to lose a mother at such an early age in them life eh you see these relationships that are put together because of status and family name and to keep the legacy of the family high these cases are happening so often but let me say i mean now stop say it thank god for social media nothing is hidden anymore we will be blasting from the rooftop where we see injustice so the powers that be can put things in place and make sure justice is served hiding sylvia behind court doors to try this case is not justice you understand so any slip between the cup and the lip we are going to be blaming even the judiciary as being in corruption you understand so let's hope that good sense prevail going forward over in st james the shanika gray story i am tired i am weary but even though i am crying i'm joyful we are overjoyed that was the immediate reaction of Nikita Gray, the aunt of 15-year-old Shanika Gray, who was stabbed to death in 2017, moments after seven-member jury issued a guilty verdict yesterday for taxi operator Gregor Roberts, the man who was on trial for the teenager's murder. Outside of a brief and barely controlled sobbing fit when the verdict was issued, before presiding High Court Judge Justin Bertram Morrison, the elder Gray was largely composed as she spoke on the behalf of the family regarding their reaction to the verdict. The jury consisting of four men and three women arrived at the verdict after 85 minutes of deliberation following the close of Justice Morrison's submission of the case. 
we have been fighting this and it has been seven years and I think seven was a number because it has been seven weeks we have been doing this and we are in the seventh year and let me tell you I know normally we are supposed to have 12 jurors but there were seven Gray said I think they made the best decision of putting away Gregory Roberts Gregory does not need to be on the road otherwise he would have similar occurrences Gray added he came and he created a show in the courtroom he tried to take over the case and I sat there and I watched them Robert's defense team as they put together their case and tried to put in some things that were not relevant but today justice prevailed prior to the verdict being announced Justice Morrison concluded his instructions as to how the jury should conduct their deliberations by reminding them that they must consider all the evidence which has been presented since the trial began on November 23, 2023. We have to decide if his defense has been made out. Is it that Gregor Roberts, in his innocence, is saying that he was framed? You put that side by side with what the witnesses were saying. You must decide if you can on a unanimous verdict. That is to say a verdict on which you all agree, said Morrison. He is not obliged to prove his innocence, but you are to take into consideration what he has said. If you are left in doubt as to whether he was involved in the killing of young Shanika Gray, that doubt will have to be resolved in his favor. Morrison added, even if you reject his version of events, you will still have to go back to the prosecution's case to be sure if you are satisfied. When the jury later gave its verdict, Robert sat down calmly in the prison dock and watched the proceedings. Although at one point he leaned in to whisper to his attorney, Chumo Paris, but Gray was not quite so calm as she made it clear what she hopes for Roberts, whose sentencing hearing will be relocated from the St. James Circuit Court to take place before the Trelawney Circuit Court on March 7th. I am praying for a maximum of anything. He stood there. He had a chance to say what it was and he refused. Maximum of anything. That's what Gregory deserved, Gray said resultly. The verdict comes five days short of the seventh anniversary of Shanika Gray's death after she was stabbed multiple times in Irwin St. James on the night of January 29, 2017. Her body was found three days later on February 1st that year. In a tragic case of irony, the younger Gray who was a grade 10 student of the Grape Pond High School in St. James, was last seen alive on January 29, 2017, while returning home from the funeral of a schoolmate. During Robert's trial, the prosecution presented evidence from 16 witnesses to include testimony from communication analysts as well as cell phone text messaging logs and a call data in the hours leading up to the fatal night of January 29, 2017. Several of the text messages which were shown through the trial included increasingly threatening messages between Roberts and his ex-girlfriend as well as between Roberts and the ex-girlfriend's mother suggesting that he was going to make a sacrifice suggesting that he was going to video record himself doing something ominous and accusing his ex-girlfriend of cunning money from him and refusing to pay it. A civilian witness also told the trial that Roberts came to him sporting bloodstain on his hands and shirt and that he showed the witness a video of himself Robert stabbing the teenager. Additionally, the court heard evidence from Maria Morrison Roberts, former co-defendant in the matter who pleaded guilty in September 2022, 
that Roberts had him record the incident after they picked up young Gray in Montego Bay and took her to Erin. Interestingly, in his unsworn statement from the prisoner's dock, Roberts told the court that he had been hired to provide transportation to Morrison and two other persons on the night of Gray's death. However, Roberts did not mention Gray at any point in his account of the events. This was one gruesome act and I'm so glad I'm here to the end to totally wrap it up, getting the testimonial and the feelings of her own family and knowing that it is finally laid to rest. It's just hard to imagine that your child leave out to go to school yeah, and you're expecting your child to come back home only for this child to take a taxi remember you know taxi is the mode of transport you know it is so crazy and wicked when you think about it you can't even trust the vehicle that you're going in you don't know what to expect when you step into these taxi these days you're not sure if the other people that is sitting next to you are confederates and they have a plan with the driver or what you just in total paranoia just have to beg God say dear Lord bring me home safe that's the best you can ask because a lot of this is happening some make the news some don't some still not found them still just missing nobody knows what happened to them and a lot of them had to do with taking taxes this is just so heart-wrenching and painful just to think about it it's scary anyway guys please remember to like comment and subscribe to my platform please love you all bye for now